Today I'm going to talk about a widespread and very useful technique known as gram staining. First I'm going to give a brief introduction to gram staining, then I'll discuss the technique and the mechanism in detail, and then finally we'll discuss the significance of the technique. Gram staining was developed in 1884 by Danish physician Hans Christian Gram. Dr. Gram had been experimenting with new stains for staining biopsy and autopsy materials when he noticed that some of the bacteria were stained differently than the surrounding tissues. And from these humble beginnings, the widely useful technique of gram staining was developed. The gram staining technique is a type of staining known as differential staining. Differential simply means that it uses at least two different dyes. And it enables the separation of different types of tissues or organisms. And the separation is due to these different dyes. So one type of tissue would stain one color, one, while the other tissue would stain another color. This image nicely illustrates the differential staining accomplished via the gram stain technique. Some of the bacteria are stained pink or red, while the other bacteria are stained purple. In gram stain, the gram positive bacteria are stained a purplish color, while the gram negative bacteria are stained a pink or a red. There are four main reagents that are used for the gram staining technique. Crystal violet, which is a blue or purplish dye. Iodine, which is used to form a complex with crystal violet. Uh, alcohol or acetone, or a mixture of the two, is used as a decolorizing agent. And then finally, saffron, which is a red or a pinkish colored dye. What physical attributes cause the differential staining in these bacteria? As we'll see in a moment, it mostly has to do with the structure of the cell wall. First, let's take a look at the cell wall of the gram-positive bacteria. The main thing we want to focus on here is this layer of peptidoglycan, which is illustrated by these red square purple circle complexes. And in a gram-positive bacteria, this is a relatively thick layer, and that's demonstrated here by there being uh, five square circle complexes deep. Uh, the other part of the cell wall of a gram-positive bacteria is the cytoplasmic membrane, which is uh, composed of phospholipid bilayer. And we'll contrast that in a moment to the cell wall of a gram-negative bacteria. The cell wall of the gram-negative bacteria is a little bit more complex. This time we see that there's an outer membrane. Uh, then the layer of peptidoglycan is much thinner. This time it's represented by only two sets of the red square purple circle complexes. But it also has a cytoplasmic membrane in common with the gram-positive bacteria. As we'll see in a moment, these differences in the cell wall are the reason that these gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria stain differentially. Let's have a look at the gram stain technique. First we'll start with a slide of dry heat fixed bacteria and then we'll add some crystal violet which you can see is a bluish or purple kind of dye to the slide. And we're going to let that sit for about a minute but in the meantime let's look at what's happening within the cell wall. All right. Now that we know a little bit about the structural differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, let's take a look at the actual mechanism by which these two groups are differentially stained. Uh, first, we're going to look at a gram-positive bacteria. And in this case, the peptidoglycan is represented by this orange band running right through here. So if you remember, we've just added the crystal violet. And we can see that here. The crystal violet is represented by these uh, purple circles. And when, we're, when we add those to the slide, the crystal violet works its way through that thick peptidoglycan layer and then through that phospholipid bilayer and gets trapped beneath there. All right, now let's have a look at a gram-negative bacteria. The first thing you'll notice is that the peptidoglycan layer right here is much thinner than in the gram-positive, but you'll also notice that there's this outer membrane. Um, but we've added crystal violet just as before. You can see the crystal violet molecules. And when they're added, they'll move through that outer membrane, through the thinner peptidoglycan layer of this gram-negative bacteria, and through that phospholipid bilayer. And again, they will be stuck. 
Okay, our minute is almost up. You can see that our cells are staying this bluish or purple color. And after the minute's over, we will give a quick rinse of water, and then we're ready for the next step. Okay, the next step is to add iodine. You can see iodine is a brownish yellowish liquid, which is going to form a complex with crystal violet. We'll add that to the slide, and again we have to let that sit for about a minute. So while we're waiting for that, let's have a look at what's going on inside of the cell wall. Alright, now let's see what happens when we add the Graham's iodine. So the Graham's iodine molecules are represented by these little yellow circles. And when they're added to the slide, they move through that thick peptidoglycan layer, through the phospholipid bilayer, and then they get trapped beneath where the crystal violet particles are. Now something very important happens when they're trapped down there. The crystal violet and the iodine ions react and they form a crystal violet iodine complex. And the important thing here is that this is a larger complex than either of those molecules are by themselves. All right, now let's look at the addition of Graham's iodine to a uh, gram-negative bacteria. It's pretty much the same process. You can see the iodine molecules here, but this time they're going to have to move through that outer membrane first, through that thinner layer of peptidoglycan, through the phospholipid bilayer, where the, again they'll meet those crystal violet particles, and again they'll form this larger crystal violet iodine complex. Okay, so the iodine's been sitting on the slide for just about a minute. We can see that the cells are still this bluish purplish color and we'll give them a quick rinse of water and we'll move on to the next step where things really start to get interesting.